Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Wise Women Roundtable for the month of April 2024. And oh, wow. <laughs> we, we've been feeling the intensity of this year already. It's just been increasingly intensifying. And April might be the most intense month of the year with all the cosmic energies that are happening, um, including we've got Mercury stationing retrograde on the 1st of April. We've got the total solar eclipse on the 8th of April. We have Uranus and Jupiter conjunct on the 20th of April. Also the United States Chiron return exact that day. And it's gonna have two more exact passes. It started last year, but three exact passes this year. So, but it's happening with that Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So that's just kind of a little bit of an overview of what's happening and I'll explain what I'm feeling about it <laughs> in this moment. And, and that is uh, because also Mercury is going to pass Chiron. Um, it's already passed once. It's going to pass two more times. Um, this Aries energy, it feels like Aries is in the house. It is big. It is really calling for our attention. And if we think about Aries as the energy, um, archetypal energy that is most about having a cause, a mission, a purpose. So tuning into what you feel is your cause, your mission, your purpose. And ideally it's a noble mission or a noble cause, a worthy mission, you know, something that <laughs> we could have a mission to like conquer another country or something, which is missions of the past perhaps, but uh, that's not what is what makes Aries happy. It really wants to restore cosmic justice. And so with all this um, Aries energy happening, the uh, that impetus is so so strong this month and when we look at the fact that on the total solar eclipse when the moon is closest to the earth hence why we can have a total solar eclipse meaning it's bigger impact on the earth's magnetic field also it's a total solar eclipse so we're moving quickly through time we're moving from um, day to dusk to night to dusk back to day and, and a, in a really short amount of time. And, and the night only lasts for two minutes <laughs> or I'm sorry, four, four and a half minutes on the center line of totality. But if you're on the outside line of totality, it might be a little bit shorter time. So even if it's five minutes, but it's not quite five minutes, um, that's not a very long night when we consider they're usually at least, um, well, depending on the time of year, how, how many hours they are. So uh, it's also a seed point. If we look at the new moon as a seed point, what are our intentions and what are we holding in intention at that time? So it's supercharged. Another thing that's happening is that this eclipse is uh, at, during totality, there may be a comet that's visible to the naked eye. And that this comet only comes around every 71 years so that we could possibly see it. So super rare. Plus Chiron is exactly conjunct the eclipse. And I, I go into more detail about this in a video I'll put in the show notes uh, for those who would like to have the visuals of what's going on and, and tune in to this eclipse. But uh, it is so powerful uh, and it's so rare. I think it's been many, many lifetimes. It's for sure only this once in this lifetime, but I think it's been many, many, many lifetimes since we've had something like this happening. Uh, Jupiter and Uranus coming together in Taurus every 84 years and the expansion and new vision around how do we really enjoy being alive on planet Earth? How do we um, honor and respect and connect with the garden of earthly delight? How do we experience greater pleasure? These are the things that are being seeded with that Uranus-Jupiter conjunction. And then on that same day, April 20th, when they come together, and they're really close right now. So you know, we're already feeling that energy and we'll feel it for a little while after. So the exact center point is the most intensified time. And then um, the, the USA Chiron return will be exact on April 20th, along with the Jupiter <laughs> Uranus conjunction. So it's like, whoa, what's happening? And oh, and let me just back up and say, the eclipse is cross crossing the USA. There was an eclipse last um, October that crossed the USA, an annular solar eclipse. This one's crossing the USA. They're cro they actually form a cross of where they went through the, the, the country. And, uh, and that's also, whenever eclipses happen in certain places can accelerate energy 
in that country or in that land or in that place or for those people. So that's also happening along with the first exact pass of Chiron over the USA NATO Chiron. What is happening? <laughs> What's going to happen? Well, we can see there's a lot of chaos on the uh, world stage, but especially in the U.S., right now. And so uh, the energies are, are intensifying and people may be feeling that they may be feeling there's some chaos in their own energetic field uh, as we're, as we're doing, as we're moving through this. But as the Greeks said, out of chaos comes order, out of chaos comes the world. So this is perhaps needed for us to have something new seated and that we get to then experience a new way of being a new um, higher vibrational way of being in the world. So one of the things I'm uh, suggesting is that people have a touchstone, whether that's a literal stone or a, a mantra or something that you can touch into and connect in with that you can keep coming back to when you find yourself in the chaos, maybe spinning in the chaos. <laughs> so for me, you could just use a word. For me, my the word I've been using a lot lately is love. I've also been using self-acceptance. Uh, you can use like a one word, kindness, love, joy, bliss, magic, miracles, uh, courage, whatever one word that really lights you up. You can ask your higher self for guidance on what word would really work for you. Um, or you could use two words, uh, self-acceptance. <laughs> Instead of just acceptance, you can do self-acceptance. Um, or three, genuine self-acceptance. So uh, whatever tuning in, like taking a moment and just asking your higher self, what would be a good touchstone word for you to tune into? And then maybe also have, have a stone that you touch in with and, and that you can connect with on a daily basis to remind you that this is happening for us and not to us. So with that, I'm going to pass this along. Oh, let me just say one more thing. I forgot um, today as we're recording this on March 29th, uh, Pallas Athena is going retrograde. And I'll put a, a link to a, a video I did with someone about this. She, we're, we're rewriting her story. So it's time. And I, I, I like, um, how did I say this? Um, it, it's a, we're in this massive shift and she, um, she is need, she's wanting a new story. She's ready for a new story as we are ready. We're all ready for a new way of being in this world. And then the other thing that's happening um, in April of this year is Sedna is moving back into Gemini. And that can only happen every, um, it happened last year. She went back into Taurus for a short time and now she's coming back in, but this is like an 11,000 year cycle. <laughs> so that's happening. And that means Sedna, who's been at the bottom of the ocean in the deep, dark depths, she's rising up to be more in our consciousness and our awareness. Um, it's the divine feminine rising. I just feel so excited about that. And she's with the Pleiades. So the, the energy of that, and I'll also put a link in another video I did with a story about Sedna as well in the show notes. So with that, I'm passing it along to Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylin. I always really appreciate the insight about our celestial situation. <laughs> um, you know, chaos is our old friend and chaos isn't a problem. Chaos is not something that needs to be fixed or fought with. You don't need to be uh, going to war anymore. There really isn't any war that needs to be expressed. You know, we, we're watching things go on that look chaotic, but don't forget that a lot of that is genetic expression. So if you say, well, why do these people always fight? Well, they're fighting right now because there's an expression going on from their genetic line that needs to be cleaned up, to, but it has to be put out and laid out for all to see before that can really be cleaned and cleared and purified. Chaos tends to purify, even though it doesn't look like that. And chaos as a consciousness is something that most humans want to avoid because we're really good at seeing patterns. We're really good at seeing uh, everything organized. And we we have a great satisfaction. We get a big dopamine serotonin uh, hit when we see everything all nicely, neatly ordered and um, organized. But then when things start to move around, this elicits a great and deep discomfort because 
we do want to have control. But just like last month, that whole idea has to be set aside. You can't be in control when the new is happening at a galactic and earthly and etheric and a physical level. So our friend chaos has this immense purpose as the energy that comes and sweeps through to bring all the dust up in your vision. And if you are holding an intent from the inside, and I love the idea of having a, a touchdown that's physical, a mantra, but in order to make sure you navigate real, true, and very powerful chaos, especially now in April, it's very important that you know who you are. You have to know who you are. You need to go back into the I am and be able to love yourself like Kaylin was alluding to. It's self-love that gets you through chaos because you're part of it. You're not separate. You're also a fragment of dust being thrown up into the air in order to fall into the most perfect divine order. And if you're willing, it takes willingness. And we often say, you know, I'm willing, I'm willing. But then when we are there at being asked to do it, we forget because we go back into the habit of trying to control it or be attached to an outcome. There's no outcomes right now that you or I can imagine. We're, we are not that clever. Source is far more clever and knows exactly what the order needs to be. We do not. We don't because we don't have any history with that kind of level of divine order, not here on Gaia. And we're here to be ready for that to begin. But it takes literally the rearranging of every single piece on the on the board. In fact, I'd argue that probably the whole board needs to be taken apart. And that's exactly what's happening. So I think that it can be very exciting and that through chaos is an opportunity. That's a very nice ancient Chinese concept. And the opportunity I would just encourage everyone to embrace is that it's an opportunity to keep loving yourself, keep taking really good care of your body, keep noticing that, hey, when things get chaotic, I tend to lean towards this other habit that makes me feel better, that makes me feel in control, or I start treating people a certain way because I, I can't handle their drama, trauma and ego stuff or whatever. So I want to control how that looks in my family and my household or my friends. And it's no, there's no need for it. All of these people, doesn't matter what age they are, their souls incarnate as sovereign beings, leave them alone, leave them alone so they can do their thing. Don't try to um, think that you know how it's supposed to be ordered because you don't, we don't know. That's the point. And so really stop running everything through what you think you know. If you think you know at this point in time, it's the perfect time to throw that right up into the dust and say, all right, I'm ready to recognize that I have no idea and that I can't run anything through what I know, but I do know who I am. I know what my heart and my intent is. And that's the piece that you're here to put on that game board when the time is right. And it's gonna be divine timing, not your timing. It's divine order, not your ego's order. It's divine, it's your divine rights from your divine true self, not any other rights that other people tell you that you have or do not have, or they're trying to take away rights or give you new rights or ignore it. It's not real. And much of the layers of our reality are going to become more and more obviously basically a gilded cage, my friends. And what's inside of the gilded cage of dogma? It's the bird. It's the truth. It's the alchemy. It's you. So now you can see the forest through the trees a little better. And I think that the wild card energy is very exciting. You know, there is this game, Uno. Some people might know it. It's a card game in the United States. And everyone's favorite card in that game is the wild card, because then you get to choose what color the game's going to be. So it's okay for April to be a wild card, because <laughs> we'll be able to have more diverse and interesting choices.
from there. But let source be the one who chooses that so that you can enjoy what's going to happen from this point onwards. So I hope that advice is supportive. And I'm going to hand it off to dear Sarah to help us a little deeper. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Kaylin. So yes, I would like to share with you, as I often do, some of my nature friends that can help us at this time. Um, the last time we met, I spoke about rescue remedy and how well it can, it's just, uh, I'm still seeing people share and still finding it something when I say simple, I don't mean simple as in um, surface level. It's just like an extraordinary combination of essences that have been put together that just help us when we don't know how to help ourselves, which is kind of what Elizabeth was saying, because if you don't know what's going to happen, how can you even really start to work anything out? So please do remember that Rescue Remedy can be really helpful. Just because something's different or hard or challenging doesn't mean that we have to go out and try and find some like amazing new solution of, you know, something that's just landed from the galactic frequencies. <laughs> Maybe it's already here. And for me, it's often nature that gives us that because nature is this very wise, very sustainable energy um, that doesn't get caught up in the chaos. So Rescue Remedy was, was just a reminder for you all. Um, there are um, a few essences that I have been using and one that came in uh, just about half an hour ago, actually, for me to share with you. Um, there is an essence from the Australian bush range called Mint Bush. Um, well, we know that mint is a very cooling frequency anyway. Um, what I love about mint bush is actually in my combination I'm taking personally right now. Every month I give myself a consultation, if you like, and uh, I'm always surprised at who comes forward. And I, when it, this essence came forward a few weeks ago, I was like, I know you and thank you so much for, for coming forward now. So Ian White, who is the, the co-creator of the Australian Bush Essences, talks about mint bush being really good when we're in a washing machine cycle. So it's as if we've actually gone into the washing machine and everything is just like, it's just going round and round and round. We don't know which way is up or what we think or who we are. So we're kind of in that space right now. So it helps us to be in the chaos and to be calm in the chaos, which is pretty much what Kaylin and Elizabeth, you were both saying, you know, we just got to find a place to shelter within our spiritual selves or whatever that means to us and just rest until that moment is over. So if there, especially if there's any sort of tendency to panic or worry, I've got a lot of those kind of defaults in my own self it can be a really good baseline help for energy. So that's the mint bush by the Australian Bush Essences. I'd really, really also encourage people who are open to this, and you could do this with essential oils as well, um, or, or crystals, as Elizabeth was saying. Uh, no, it was um, Kaylin, you were talking about having stones, weren't you? That was it. Um, anything from nature that provides that solid space so in my world what I would tend to do is make up a bottle of a mister of essences there's a little fly trying to join in here um so there is a beautiful uh combination from the Alaskan essences called purification and what it's um oh you have some there you go isn't it amazing Malini, it's got a beautiful smell. It's got essential oils in it. And it's just like really good to clear out. I think it's just like really good to have energy hygiene as well, just like we'd clean our teeth or have a shower every day or whatever it is we do, is to also clean our energy field. So it's just it's just keep clearing it, just keep neutralizing, just keep coming back to the clean slate, whatever that means, stilling ourselves especially if we have seen, heard, talked about, you know, some 
form of chaos, which is not difficult to do right now. It's just like a really good neutral space to bring us back into the present. There are many, many other space clearing sprays and you could use all manner of things or actually create yourself. But I love the purification one. Um, and if you get it from the Alaskan essences, you'll get these amazing essential oils with it as well, which really add a very high vibration. The last and very interesting and different essence that I want to share is also from the Alaskan essences. Um, so there are many, many different vibrational essences in, in, in our world. Um, we know flower essences, not everybody knows them, but they're, they are the most known. Uh, the second most known are probably gem essences, which are made with crystals. Now, there's another kind of essence which I find fascinating. And again, the Alaskan essences were probably one of the pioneers of these. And they're called environmental essences. Essentially, what happens is that you place a bowl in an environment. And that's it. The bowl's got water in it and you leave it. And as we know, water absorbs the frequency of what's going on around it. And we are left with a bottle of water, which then gets created into um, an essence. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is going to work. On Oh, yes, it is. Look, there we go. So this is polar ice from the Alaskan essences. Um, and it, it, you, if you look there, you can actually see the bowl. So this was created by the Alaskan essences um, at the North Pole. And the story behind it is is that there, again, I'm not, maybe not going to speak very technically here, but there's lots of big, very ancient ice plates all moving and they take huge amounts of time to pass by each other. So essentially what this essence is, but especially because it's in a very cold place and we know that cold slows things down, it's, a, it's an essence for time. So at any time, and this kind of came to me as a kind of mercury retrograde sort of essence when we are in a very Aries, fast moving energy on one level, but we're also on another level being asked to step back. So we've got, you know, opposing, it's like these big ice plates moving uh, across, not across, next to each other. Um, and... One of the mantras, if you like, that goes with this is I have all the time that I need. So it, it's it's when in those times when we are impatient, we want something to happen. Either we think we haven't got enough time or time isn't behaving itself a bit like today. Um, just backstory here. I arrived completely late to our meeting because we are in different time zones. So it's that kind of friction that gets set up when time just isn't really behaving itself and it was it was kind of that experience that reminded me of this essence so I have to thank that experience for that but it's just like really really useful for any time where there's a time issue so mercury retrograde is a great time to kind of like get quiet and think about this or any time I'm just really um looking here at Steve, that Steve is the the guy that uh, co-created this. Actually, I think it was a friend of his in 1988. But he talks about getting older, waiting for an operation. These are Steve's words. In between relationships, in between jobs. And we don't, here you go, Elizabeth, we don't know what's going to happen next. We're just in the in-between. So this feels to me is like a perfect essence for now. So maybe we could just all, you know, call in that frequency to ourselves and just to be remain present with ourselves, remain present with who we are, how we feel, um, and just come back to accept, 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 and wait until it might be a long time or it might feel like a long time. I think that's really the, the, the frequency behind this until the ice plates actually move into a new place and a new structure appears on the earth. So 
there we go. I hope that's been helpful for everybody. And I will now uh, hand over to Nalini. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, all of you. It's always so fun how the different fractals come in when the wisdom decides to shape itself through us. You know, it's just to speak to the the polar ice, the the water in the bowl. I mean, isn't that what we are? Basically, water in an alleged container. Our bodies, our our beings, and so often. I mean, it's been spoken to. Veda Austin's doing a wonderful job. Emoto did a wonderful job. How often do we really honor that from the self care? perspective within ourselves and realize that we are that container of fluidity steeping in whatever environment we're in in the moment and it's not a matter of deciding not this this that's a well-known for millennia egoic kind of construct that says i am this i am not that what if that just was all being dissolved by the chaos? It was just being ground into the sand under the tidal wave. And that as we align with that truth, clarity, authenticity, and sovereignty that is our source essence, and is our mind going to know what that is at any moment? No. And that's very uncomfortable to a mind that's used to knowing. And that's pretty much everyone right now. And that's the teaching of chaos. You know, chaos is the great mother. She births everything it's to use that language. And if we recall that we are that shifting fluid water, that point of light, that truth essence, what whatever the core of you is, whatever concept works for you at the moment, and trust me, it will change, <laughs> whatever that is, if we trust that, then it's not so much that everything swirls around us, although it does. It's that we move along with the frequencies with which we resonate. Everything is energy. Everything is frequency. So if there's a situation close by that feels very discordant, that's reflection. That's a teacher. And this isn't a a pious kind of, I'm certainly not a saint. It's not that kind of thing. It's just, oh, I should befriend that. I should love that. Well, stop shooting on yourself. No, look at it, acknowledge, accept that it's there. And then let source move it how it needs to be moved. If it needs to be moved, all frequencies are shifting right now, all of them. Even all of the infusions, you know, I wrote about all the infusions that were entering Gaia's field last year, and they're all being morphed and shifted and changes, changed and metamorphosized, however that word is pronounced, and shift with it, shifted within all of us, instantiated, integrated, as we keep becoming moment to moment to moment to moment, something that is, we could say new, we could say fresh, we could certainly say unknown, but what we are doing is we are shedding and shredding and threshing to the essence of what each of us is, and it's unique and it's precious, and there is nothing that is not of value here somewhere. And we will be guided and lifted and carried. This is not a passive activity by any means. We are guided and lifted and carried as we choose that. Allow that essence that we are to choose. You know, it's always being said through me, light is intelligence, it knows what to do. Well, the shadow is just a different form of light. Does it always know what to do? It knows what to do in as much as it sees. As in through a glass darkly, that's what that expression means. It's like it's filtered, that's all. So as we let our true light guide us, it moves us toward where we resonate away from where we don't and when the moment comes and we are in this moment in the eclipse window i mean i love it but everyone has said here about that there's something that i read years ago that is sticking with me right now simply because durga kali segment is moving through my body you know so much so that it's actually funny um in an airy stellium which we're approaching into right now segment roars 
because she is given the megaphone. She is given the opportunity to come through. And a roar is not war. They are not the same thing. The roar shatters anything that might appear to be in the way or blocking or blinding or distorting or distraction. It simply moves that energy. It gives it an opportunity to become available in a different way. We are so far past the point where we can say, I don't want that. Hit the delete button. <laughs> okay, delete your core. Watch Star Trek. See how well that works. You can't do that. So it's, instead, it's this is where the acknowledge, accept that it's there, and then see what happens. Be present with it and see what happens. And with this eclipse window that we're in and right following on the heels of the equinox, we are in such a shift. It's like the continental plates shifting. Like I lived on top of a fault line at one point and every so often the house would go like this. And one gets used to these things, you know, certain things would fall down on the shelves, you know, you didn't want to place things in a certain way in the house because, you know, and I used to just think of it as this is source just giving it a good shake. And I would ask the granite, the house was on granite, so it was interesting, like the whole thing would move. I would ask the granite, how do you experience that? And the granite would just go, eh, yeah, <laughs> you know, this is just what's happening. So as we can kind of accept, lighten up about it a little bit and let that invincible force, Durga's energy is known as the invincible force. This is the divine love, the creative expression that undoes, does, creates everything. And if we can be open to that, allow it, receive it, not in a passive way, but in a very active choosing kind of way that, okay, I'm there. I'm with the program, just to use another expression and see what happens. Because it won't be what we expect anyway. I mean, this this month, April, and then this year is going to be all about the unexpected for a lot of reasons. A lot of them are celestial and astrologically inclined, but a lot about what is unexpected will just good. It would be nice to see it rather than ignore it, fight it, try to make something to blame or be ashamed about or some kind of war, why not simply allow and enjoy the roar? So that's what I have to say for today. So thank you all. I appreciate you all being here. Thank, thank you very much. You. Oh my gosh, thank you. And I'm thinking another mantra or it's that people could tune into is expect the unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> because that'll help us be more prepared and, and we won't be attached to how we think it should be necessarily we're, because we're in that place of um, welcoming whatever is wanting to come through and especially come through each of us. So love that. Love all of you so much. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the other side. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah,